Welcome everybody to, the, I'm Sarah Seidelman and this is one of the Hummingbird series interviews and I have with me today Aviva Gold who is an amazing, amazing art medicine woman who I want you to meet. And I read her book several years ago and it's called Painting from the Source and we'll talk more about that. Um, but I just was like fell in love with the way she wrote and the technique that she was talking about. And eventually, like all things, it took me a while, but I got to her workshop last weekend and it was such a powerful experience that I thought I wanted you guys to get to know her and learn a little bit more. So, uh, Aviva, welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad Thank you're you. here. Um, Maybe you should tell people that the painting in the background came from the workshop. Because yes, this, this wonderful gigantic. piece behind me, I actually painted and I just thought to myself, well, I had no idea how to painting like that in me. <laughs> um, and this process that Aviva creates this amazing, safe and very sacred environment, which you get to step into if you go to her hunter for workshops, but you can also learn how to do that for yourself just by reading her book. And um, we'll explore more about that. Um, but I think she uh, started, her story is very interesting. And I think she didn't start off painting from the source, painting in this sacred and safe way. Can you tell us more about how you got started doing what you do and the way you do it, the way you help people to paint and create? Sure. Well, I began um, going to traditional art school uh, in New York City, even as a child, uh, art lessons in the Museum of Modern Art. So, um, and then I went to a special high school for um, art. And um, then I studied art education in college. And then I got an MFA in painting from Pratt Institute. So I went the traditional um, professional painting route. And I taught art for many years um, to children and adults um, in the traditional way. What I found was I missed, uh, with professional training in art, I missed that playfulness and the, um, that just being completely absorbed in what I didn't realize as a child was a spiritual experience. I realized that later. But I knew that there was something I was missing um, from my childhood painting experiences, uh, going the route of professional. So I spent the rest of my life trying to get back to that place. And um, I studied art therapy. I thought that would be a route, but it turned out to be um, more clinical. And then um, I, I became a psychoanalyst and studied Jungian therapy and Gestalt therapy, psychoanalytic and um, psychodrama. And it, it was all important as part of how I approach things today but it still wasn't quite it. Then after a, um, a really difficult divorce with three little children, you know, the hero's journey, there's always the, the fall, the death, um, symbolic death, I um, started searching even more. And I went to a, a painting workshop in, one of the um, centers, Omega Institute, okay. uh, where the people um, did this process called process painting, which was more, and they used childlike materials. And that was all I needed to um, open up the step that I was looking for. So I used all of my experience in, as a painter and a therapist and a spiritual seeker and a yogi and kind of put it together with um, using non-archival materials and trying to help adults get back to the um, childlike experience of innocence uh, that they missed out on. Um, really what happened is I created an experience that I wanted to go to. And in your lives, speaking to, you know, the people that are watching, that's how it really works um, the best. We end up 
um, creating, everything we do is really uh, biographical in some way or another. And we end up creating what we need and, 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 and create the tribe of people that we really long for, which is what Sarah does as well, um, which is different sometimes from our biological family <laughs> that we were born to. It's our spiritual family. Right on. Nothing Absolutely. to do with being the same religion or the same race or anything like that. Yeah. It's, born, yeah. it's being born under the same star and seeking the same magic in this case. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I so I know that that's why Sarah connects with me because I'm a mirror for her. Totally. And same, and same way back. You know, it's a mutual attraction we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mutual admiration for society. Um, yeah, and what you said about we create the thing that we need the most. I mean, I think about that, like I wrote the book that I needed most. We create the workshop we need most. We, you know, yes. all these things. And let's talk about that because when we talked about, um, well, a couple things, I want to talk about non-archival materials. So in fancy speak, what that means is like kindergarten class grade materials. So what Aviva had us painting with this last weekend wasn't fancy oils or anything expensive. It was sheets of paper you would find in a kindergarten class and um, uh, tempera paint. paint. Yeah, watercolor poster paint, right? Why, tell us why that's so freeing to work with these kinds of materials in your experience. Yes, absolutely. And I hope everybody buys my book or listens to the audio tape because I go into it really more. I go into all of this really in depth there. Um, because we're so self-conscious about um, what we create and using childlike materials that aren't expensive, first of all, then we're not concerned about spoiling something or, you know, it, it takes the, um, the edge off the, any anxiety about creativity. You know, we're just playing, we're doing this, you know, for fun. I have a big sign up, um, paint as if you're going to burn it. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and then it brings back memories of being a child. For those of you who remember painting in kindergarten, I have people come to the workshop who don't even have a memory of ever touching a paintbrush or being with paint. But, but that's the idea, to diffuse any um, sense of, you know, art, art, you know, the art world and, the, and, and uh, formal education in art or yeah. anything. That. I love that. Right. I mean, it's so funny. And, and look, look at Sarah's painting. See what can happen with a temper paint. Um, and, I just, and I don't think that you put the final coat of acrylic on yet, did you? Not yet. I yeah. still maybe have a little more work to do. I'm on. glad you do. As your, <laughs> yeah. as your guide, I <laughs> keep telling Sarah there are so many more details that want to come there. And this can, it's a spiritual practice, really. It can just go on and on. You know, you take yeah. your paints out every day and you, and you just do a few strokes, you know. And one thing that you said to me that really blew my mind as we were all painting these paintings and looking around the room, everybody's paintings were completely different. You said uh -huh. something to the effect of, you know, as you change the details of your painting, like some people would paint over areas and then start a different thing going there. But as we change our paintings, we change ourselves. And the idea that these paintings are really, as you said, autobiographical, or the painting is somehow a representation of, of me, or you know, my painting is a representation of me. Can you say more about that? I think that's really interesting that our creative expressions are simply, um, yeah, parts of ourselves. And that they're changeable by putting a brush on the paint, or you know, yeah. onto the canvas. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, there are a few things there. First, the name of my work is Painting from the Source. That's the name of the book. That's the name of the work. So there are so many levels from where the painting comes from. Um, yours, uh, Sarah, you're speaking to one, um, but it's all a combination because it really comes from a place that's the source. It's the source of the energy that started the universe in motion. It's from whatever God is or goddess is. It's from the great mystery. <laughs> and, um, and it's alive. It's alive. Um, and it's waiting 
to happen. You know, here's this, this empty paper. It's alchemical. It's the same process we tapped into that created the sperm and the egg that created us. You know, it's, it's just that kind of magic. And of course, that's why the ancient Hindus knew that um, the, for the second chakra is the chakra of creativity. It's also the chakra of birth and, you know, the, the genital area. It's, you know, it's magic. Um, so we, without realizing it, yes, you know, we're tapping into our personal unconscious and our own um, history uh, since we were born, but there's some other place that, that happened before we were born and that's c going to continue happening after we die in this form, in this body, that is the source as well. And um, the whole idea of changing something, I mean, now theoretical physics is understanding more about quantum mechanics and um, if something, if, if a particle that's connected changes in one place in the universe, it's going to change in the other. You know, they call that entanglement, right. So I noticed in all the years I've been doing this work and the uh, tens of thousands of people I've worked with all over the world and in my own dream process that, um, and everything I've read and done and maybe even something I channeled from the source, that if you change um, that, that the dreams we have when we go to bed at night um, or during the day, <laughs> the dreams, the paintings we make, and the physical symptoms that we have, um, whether it be a cold or an ache in a shoulder or, um, or cancer or whatever it is, um, all the things that happen in our body, it's all connected, our paintings, our dreams, our physical symptoms. And there's even more that's connected, you know. And okay. during this weekend, it was very So if you change one thing, if you change something in this painting, because you're painting in such a deep way, you're not copying anything. You don't, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you're turning it upside down. You're using your non-dominant hand at times. So if something shifts in the painting, it will also shift in you. And, you know, and when people are are at a retreat with me, they're also having dreams. And sometimes the dreams change the next night or something from the dream continues in the painting. And then the, you know, so it's all connected. Oh, and yes, you could tell about what happened with your back. Just related to that, yeah, my, you know, we were painting a lot and it was a physical process and I was kind of starting to get a little tired and my lower back just started kind of like being a little crampy. It wasn't like severe pain, but it was just like aching. Right. And about that time, my painting was much smaller than it is. And Aviva noticed that I started with like maybe a four by five piece of paper and I was painting over the edges and Aviva suggested gently that the painting needed to grow. And as soon as I grew the painting and added more paper and started to expand it, the back pain disappeared. <laughs> So such you were a, cramped. You were cramping yourself, right? I was cramped. Who knew? I had to. I had to grow. I mean, the things that this all showed me this weekend were just so incredible. Um, right. Well, right just, there, I just want to add something for yeah. people who are listening. Um, it's really important to ask the painting what it wants. So um, I didn't just say to Sarah. Um, I, uh, this painting needs to grow. What I pointed out to her was when the painting was smaller, just look at her painting and see it with maybe um, 12 inches less all around. She was paint, the paint was going over the edge of the painting uh, all around onto the wall. And so I, we looked at that together. I mean, that's really the painting speaking and saying, help, help, give me more room. Like the way you need to transplant something into a larger pot, you mm -hmm. know, with, a, with, a, with an actual physical plant. When, when the pot starts cracking, you know, or, or you see that it's getting cramped and it's so obvious that it's, it's what they call root bound. And so ironically- Right, and you were? And all the plants in front of me are root bound that are in my office right now. I was just talking about that like three months ago, so. 
but all of us in here are definitely in need of expansion. Right. right. Um, yeah. I want to talk, yeah, so the book, Painting from the Source, is an incredible treasure trove, and the audiobook is wonderful because Aviva reads it, and it's very meditative, and also she gives you all the specific instructions on just what paint to buy, exactly how to set things up, and how to begin. And so, you don't need to go to a workshop, but however, I would strongly encourage going to one because they're wonderful. They're in Oracle, Arizona at her beautiful home. Uh, they're just an incredible experience. I can only say that I feel completely changed by that painting, by the group, by everything that, that happened that she facilitated. Um, and there's one going to be in February and there's one in March already. Is that right, Aviva? Yeah, the one, in, the one in February is pretty full is okay. because I can only take seven people comfortably okay. in my house. Yeah. You sleep there like summer camp, you know, but it's, oh. but we have fun. Yeah. And sometimes, um, like Sarah started out in the bunk room and then she ended up migrating on a different bed in the living room and, you know, and then someone slept in the studio, but, you know, but, but we're, we have fun and it it's, was awesome. It, 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 it's really great, so. But you didn't tell them about the five-day one in Switzerland in August. Now that, I, mean, I heard about that. I heard, that. You sex I heard it was really. amazing because five I days is before, a, really, right. a delicious amount of time to be able to be with a painting like this. So yeah, tell us about that. You're right. And then of course, you know, people come from all over the world. You know, it's an international happening and different languages being spoken. And it's, you know, but we all speak the language of art. So that is um, August 23rd to the 28th. There's still room in that one. It's at a, um, a retreat center, the Center for Unity. I can't pronounce the word in German. It's in the German part of Switzerland, Schwe Schwebenalp. <laughs> but okay, we'll hold the link. If you look at my website at the, um, the page of uh, events and workshops, uh, you'll see it and you can get a lot of information and there's a link to the center. It is breathtaking. It's really in the, in the Alps and um, there's a big waterfall in the distance and there's a river and places you can swim and, and it's just, oh, I can't wait to go because I did the last one in Switzerland in a different place. And I haven't been to this place yet. Awesome. But the person that's helping me produce it, who's also making the documentary film uh, that I'm in, um, I'm in, in that film with other people, um, with three other people. Um, uh, he's been there and he chose the place. And Beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be great and great food and the whole thing, so. I can yeah. only imagine it would be absolutely life altering, but so would one of the ones in Arizona. So I'm going to post a yeah. link yes. in this so you can go to Aviva's website and you can get her book. Um, what did I want to, I guess I wanted to ask you, like if you had somebody in front of you who was saying, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm an artist. I, I'm wanting to explore my creativity. You know, where do I begin? Is there something what would be most helpful? What, you know, what kind of advice do you have for that person? Well, come to a workshop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Um, now, is this someone that cannot come to a workshop for some yeah, reason? Let's pretend they're just like, what could I do oh. this week to help myself? Like, I I'm just, sure. I'm desperate and I'm in a, and I just got through, I'm just in the middle of a horrible divorce or I'm just in the middle of a big diagnosis that's really scary yeah. Or something, somebody just, I lost somebody who means something to me and I'm really, I'm on that hero's journey and it is unpleasant. Like, is there some, what could I do with, to help myself? Yeah. Um, well, I'll say, uh, you know, a few things. I mean, of course, just grab paper, um, grab the, the computer paper, you know, <laughs> copy paper. Yeah. And uh, if, there, if there are children in your home, I'm sure there's a box of crayons somewhere. Um, it's not hard to find a, uh, a box of markers or crayon down the block or, you know, yeah. in every place. And um, play, play. Now, I have some very brief instruction videos um, that are free just on my website, on different pages. Just go yeah. and you'll see uh, where there are little videos of me just instructing you, you know, how to, uh, you know, what to think about, you know, 
when, you know, like right before you're going to draw. Um, if you feel inhibited, use your non-dominant hand. Uh, you can ask a question uh, to the universe. What do I need to know, you know, uh, about the situation or, you know, um, and then just play and see what happens. You know, it's, it's really about expression. You can express yourself with um, turning on music you like and moving, you know, by yourself, just moving, um, making sounds, uh, maybe um, bellows, screams, yells, you know, just, you know, screaming and crying. And if you, if you live somewhere like in an apartment or with other people around, you don't want to scare them. What I used to do is I would go in my car somewhere, you know, like maybe yeah. to a quiet park, to a parking lot or, you know, you don't want to drive while you're hysterically crying. It's not <laughs> a good idea, but, but you could pull over somewhere that no one, <laughs> you. that's one of the benefits and you roll up the windows and you just, you know, start. So yeah, it's, it's a doubt. And the same thing with color or drawing something, you just draw higher glyphics. You draw the, 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 the stick figure, it doesn't matter. You don't have to know what you're doing, but it's like expressing. This is how you avoid having to have physical symptoms, you know. Letting it It's flow. letting it out in some form, you know, whether it be movement, you know, sound um, or visual, right? Or g grab some clay or... You know, and then the old, the thing we all hear about, you know, taking something, you know, getting a dartboard and, <laughs> and putting the face of the person that's, you know, oh, no. <laughs> or something, you know, or a punching bag going to a gym and just, you know, that's one thing. I was, I, I was working out just a little bit during the time of a breakup and, um, and, and uh, a friend of mine was in the gym with me and he took my hand, he put the boxing gloves on and he, and he brought me to the punching bag <laughs> and he said, go at it. And that really, I mean, it was wonderful. So, um, awesome. so all these ways of just not keeping it in, you know, letting it, crying, feel, letting it out. Fear. Don't worry about, um, the, you know, you, you know, some people are afraid to start crying because they think they'll never stop. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's good. Yeah, it's, it comes in waves and it won't right. yeah, it last yeah. forever. And journaling, just just a, grab a paper and a pencil and you know, morning pages. You know, using yeah. that technique of just letting it just flow. You can burn it afterwards. No one's going to read it. Right on. Just, yeah pages and pages of ranting you'll feel better you know so it's really expression my form is is in you know visual using color and yeah and, and drawing images and or just abstract or whatever right right such good advice so lots of ways well thank you aviva so much for being You're here welcome. For listening. i hope you've enjoyed this and i hope you go buy aviva's book and then you book yourself a weekend or treat yourself to switzerland and like you know go visit your long lost relative over there whoever it is you know um uh, sarah before we end i i want to put something out there it relates to something you know, that I dreamt and that came up in my medi uh, meditation this yeah. morning. Just in case, you know, you never know. This is how my book got published originally by HarperCollins, by me putting it out to a group. A couple of years ago, I channeled a story that I think would be a great movie. Um, I wrote it in the form of a fairy tale or a myth. Um, and it's a story for our time of of um, the, the meeting of the masculine and feminine. Um, and, what, you know, it just relates to everything that's going on in healing. And if anybody knows a screenwriter, a, a, someone that um, is interested in films like um, Avatar or Arrival, I don't know if people saw Arrival, those kinds of um, enchanting, uplifting, you know, films that could change the world. 
um, let, you know, go to my website, you'll see my email address uh, on the contact page and just let me know. And I'm going to ask our mutual painting friend, um, uh, uh, Leonardo as well. Awesome. Okay. Beautiful. And I love that you're putting it out there because yeah. it doesn't happen until we put it out there. We got to plant that seed or that's just make right. it last. And that's, that's how the universe right. knows what we, right. what we need. Right. Okay. Oh, that is it's good, such a darling. Thank, thank you. you so much. And thanks yeah. for watching, everybody. All right.